In this video, I'll be giving my reaction to that deleted scene from the Batman featuring the Joker, but also what problems it might create for a sequel. Let's do it. So it's all about the tease. That's what I'm loving here. It's how the Joker is framed from these different angles and yet none of them ever seem really satisfying. Every angle, every shot makes us want to see a little bit more. That's pretty high up there for an intro and crazy that it's not in the actual movie, although fairly explainable. If you put this scene in the movie then you can't really have the Riddler interrogation scene either because they're, they're just too similar and it would lose something from that powerful exchange at the end of the Batman. Also, you lose the teaser you then get when the Riddler is in his cell and the Joker begins to talk to him. I just love how this builds and builds through small, tight, close-up shots, out-of-focus stuff, those scars on his, on his fingers, on his hands, on his face, on the back of his, his skull. You can tell that this Joker, as you walk through this scene, is physically scarred in a way that's inexplicable for someone to have survived that. So you get the impression that maybe, maybe this is a genetic disorder that he has, something he's been born with. And in that sense, that would kind of shape why the Joker is the way he is. You know, what the world has given him is how he then perceives he should give back to the world. And briefly, speaking about the performance of Barry Cogan, I mean, I'm a big fan of nearly all of the Joker performances out there, except maybe Jared Leto doing Ace Ventura in the Justice League movies. It might create some problems for the sequel, in the sense that how many millions of people are going to watch this deleted scene on YouTube? And then we have to be reintroduced to the Joker in the second movie. I can see why Matt Reeves wanted to put this out here. It's, it's, it's too good to leave on the cutting room floor. But where does our introduction to the Joker then sit in a second movie? And it's not a massive problem. Like it's the kind of thing a filmmaker like Matt Reeves is gonna solve fairly easily and in good time, but it's super impressive. But it also is a lesson in killing your, your darlings, I suppose. If you have something that's wonderful, but it doesn't really fit your story, still has to be left out of that film. So my biggest takeaways from this video is, first of all, if you're introducing an interesting character that you know the audience is gonna to wanna to see, you can tease that out with different combinations of shots, of focus, and build and build. And that last shot where it's not even, you don't even see his whole face in one go, it's that movement where his, his face moves up through the glass and we see the top and then we see that smile, it's the last thing we see, that Joker smile, and it's, it's grotesque. Okay, so what did you think about the Joker's deleted scene from the Batman? Let me know in the comments below, It'd be great to hear your thoughts. I'll see you next time, filmmaker. <laughs>